Hey bag makers, today I'm gonna to be talking about LDH snips, some cross stitch projects that I finished last week, various fabrics that I've added to my stash. Um, the demonstration will be using Giardini paints. I'm really excited about this demonstration for tonight. Um, I will be showing a new quilt sampler that I picked up and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. I see Mary Grace is watching from Colorado, Dolores from Alabama, and Cheryl from Milwaukee. So I have some really fun things to talk to you about tonight. First off, before we get to anything, I wanted to wish Tracy a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, blah, blah, blah. happy birthday to you, Tracy. Um, everyone join me in wishing Tracy a happy birthday. I ho hope you had a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend and many more to come. So um, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk to you about, I link in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, projects, or notions that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So I picked up some new thread snips LDH snips. I got a regular size snip and a smaller one. Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera and I'm going to share with you what the snips look like. So it came in a really nice box. I got a smaller set too. Um, these were sort of um, inexpensive looking snips, but these are the ones I'm really excited about. First off, they come in a few different finishes, including I think I saw gold, um, a midnight, which is a dark color, and the prism ones, which I got, which are a rainbow finish. Super cool. They come with a little rubber tip so that when you're not using it, um, if you have it open on your desk, you can just keep uh, the snips uh, enclosed so you don't ac accidentally poke yourself. And they're good for both right-handed and left-handed users. I like how they feel in my fingers. Of course, I love the rainbow prism color and I've been keeping them next to my sewing machine. So when I'm sewing, if I need to clip a thread, um, I just have these nearby. It says in the package that they're also good for cutting lightweight fabrics such as cotton, silk, linen, um, lightweight rope, things like that. But I feel like I'm gonna be using my LDH snips for um, clipping threads probably 99% of the time. So again, Check out the LDH website besides snips. They have scissors and other fun things um, in different finishes, which is really cool. You can be color coordinating. Um, and again, links in the description. So cross stitch. Um, I've been working on the hummingbird cross stitch that I shared with you recently. I finished the project. Uh, there we go. Um, I, I was super excited to finish it. I, it's hanging on my wall with two other cross stitch projects that I finished within the last year and I had so much fun working on this one that I started working on this um, crane from the same pattern designer and it reminds me of the sandhill cranes that we have um, during the summer they were walking past our house twice a day and I'm over half finished already so this is uh, the crane I'll share it with you as soon as I finish it I'm not I'm not trying to be super speedy but in case I have it done before next Sunday I'll share the finished one on the show um, these are really fun because I like working on them while I'm watching TV in the evening or even during the day. And um, they take a little thought because you're just stitching the same repetitive X's over and over, just changing your thread colors. Of course, you have to do a little bit of counting to get the right color in the right spot. But other than that, I feel like it's pretty foolproof to work on cross stitch. Uh, Tracy says, thank you everyone for the birthday wishes. I think my husband was behind this. Maybe, maybe. Um, anyway, I hope you had a wonderful day, Tracy. Um, let's see. Oh, speaking of the cross stitch, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. What would you like to achieve this year? So um, besides working on some uh, new patterns, the cross stitch has been really fun to work on. Um, I always say I, I'm hoping to get back to some garment pattern sewing. I haven't sewn a garment in must be a few years now. Um, I do really enjoy sewing garments and all of the other things. It's just 
gosh, there's so many creative things that we can choose to work on. Um, not enough hours in the day, I suppose. So various fabrics that I've added to my stash that I wanted to share with you today. Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. The first one that I picked up is actually a panel. So I've, I've got it wrapped up in um, the packaging that it came in. It's actually a sateen fabric, so it feels really nice and um, soft, softer than quilting cotton. I'm going to open this little sleeve to share with you. This is um, the whole panel. So it's 108 inches by 121 inches. It comes with a really large panel that you can use for um, a self-made quilt top and then other smaller pieces that you can use for pillows and uh, quilt labels. Danny's going to put a graphic on the screen. This is what really sold me on getting this bedding um, panel. Um, this picture right here. We currently don't really have a, a comforter for our bed. I bought one when we first moved in, but w once I got it, I hated it. It felt really cheap. But when I saw this, I knew I had to have it. I just love the panel. I love the quilting. I love the pillows that go with it, and the colors are really fun. So let's see how long it will take me to make this or get to making this, but um, I'm excited to make that panel uh, for a comforter for our bed or quilt, what, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I have some other fabrics that I've added to my stash too. So Danny's going to switch back to the overhead camera. Um, so these are from the same uh, fabric line, Moody Blooms, both in uh, white background and black background. And I picked up, there were some metallic finishes from the same line. So let me see, you can probably see the metallic finish right there. So I picked it up in, uh, it's not exactly a navy, it's sort of like a darker teal. Um, I got it in black also. They had it in sort of a cranberry red. I didn't pick up that one, but I did get this one. This one's really nice too. And I also picked up some um, new colorways of spectrostatic fabrics from Juicy Juice. So these, I love using these for lining fabrics because um, it's easy to pick out one of these uh, blender type fabrics to go with a lining based on another fabric that I already have that I'm planning on using for my exterior. So for example, these two go together pretty good. I'd probably definitely use that as a lining with this particular fabric. But here are some of the other colors that I picked up. There's more available um, and there's been a, a couple iterations of the spectrostatics so far. But I just picked up ones that I thought I might use. Um, colors that caught my eye, I guess. This one, I super love this one right here. Uh, nice and bright and then this one's sort of like an evergreen. I'm not sure if the green's showing up too well on camera, but um, Yeah, always adding new fabrics to the stash. I'm kind of running out of room So I guess I need to sew a little bit faster But if you're interested in any of these just check my link in the description and you can find out more information there, so um, Another project that I've been working on I finished this one maybe a week and a half ago. I made a quilt for my friend Kelly for her birthday. Danny's gonna put the picture up on the screen. Um, the link to the quilt pattern, it was a PDF pattern, is in the description. Kelly chose the, the colors for the quilt and I'm going to send it off to be long-armed and hopefully it'll arrive in time for her birthday. And um, it was rather a large quilt and we've been getting a lot of snow so it was hard to hold it up and get all of the parts of the quilt visible, but Danny did his best and I think he got, yeah, I think you could see most of the quilt. So again, um, the link to that PDF quilt pattern is in the description. I feel like it's the perfect beginner friendly quilt besides just regular squares. Um, I sewed the whole thing in two days. Um, it was two days of a lot of sewing, but um, I, I guess three days total if you count cutting out the fabric. So. It was really fun to work on. It was all half square triangles, so just um, repetitive uh, piecing. And I did use the um, triangle paper on a roll. Um, I think it's uh, available from Fat Quarter Shop, but um, not part of the pattern, but I really like sewing with uh, foundation paper piecing, sewing through paper. I feel like it's fun and it also makes everything super exact and precise. And so that's what I did for this particular quilt. So um, I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments, have you made a bag for a family member or a friend as a gift bag or pouch? So since my uh, quilt was a gift for a friend, I'm curious if you 
enjoy making things for friends or family members as gifts and if you do it often let me know in the comments i'm curious to see um, what everyone's doing as far as their sewing and gifting so in lieu of the book review this week i picked up a sampler quilt pattern and a bundle of fabric really love them so i wanted to share with you on the show so i purchased these from fat cord um not fat cord shop stash fabrics is one of my favorite online shops, but I think they only had a bundle or two left. So the link in the description is for Etsy just in case Stash Fabrics runs out. But if you are looking for a great online source for fabric, um, the website is stashfabrics.com. So um, it is a sampler quilt. Here's the one that I picked up on the back and I actually did pick up the fabric bundle to make this exact quilt. Here's the, the fabric bundle so you can see all of the colors. So what I like to do Picking fabrics for bags is fine, but um, I don't know, picking fabrics for quilts really stresses me out and I kind of just want to pick something either something just like what the designer's done in the, in the pattern photo or um, things that I've seen online, similar colors, and I just like to have that um, off my plate as far as thinking wise. So this is the bundle that I picked up. I wasn't sure about the orange fabric when I saw it online, but now that I got it in person, I kind of like it. There are other options for other colorways for this particular quilt, and let me share with you. They've got a picture on the inside. So this is the one that I picked, and there are six total. So these are Moda solids, and um, this one's a colorway with uh, blues and some beige. This one's a really bright one. This one's called Tropical Getaway. This one's kind of a Christmas-themed one. This one has a southwest feel with browns and turquoise, and this is called Pink Lemonade. So all the cutting instructions and um, information for piecing the blocks is in the book. I just wanted to share with you um, the type of instruction that's included. So this is, I covered everything up just, uh, you know, for the designer's uh, sake or privacy, but all the cutting instructions are here, and the assembly is just di all diagrams. So. Uh, really no written instructions besides some at the beginning and the end as far as uh, finishing the quilt but um, for me I, I've made a few quilts before so I'm totally fine with that and um, yeah I, I flipped through the book earlier today and everything was really easy to understand everything was color-coded um, based on the the fabric bundle that I picked up so again this is called um, my favorite color is Moda and it's a sampler quilt and I'm not again same thing as the the bed quilt i'm not sure when i'll get to that but uh, when i do i'll share it with you on the show so danny's favorite part of the social sunday show when he's not on the show we'd like to invite all the bag makers to stand proud let us know in the comments that you're part of the so sweetness squad we're so happy that you're here and part of our bag making community um, we really appreciate you watching i was preparing the outline today and i was looking at the dates uh, preparing the blog post and I could see all the dates of the previous shows on the, the blog post and coming up in June it'll be four years for us doing live shows so wow that that four years went by really fast um, we still love doing the shows and the videos so thank you so much for supporting us whether you've been with us from the beginning or if you're new around here um, the demonstration for tonight is something that I was super excited about um, I have a lot of notions that I've been collecting for demonstrations and notion reviews. And of course, when I purchase them, I think they're all really great uh, notions and supplies. This one I thought was good, but when I actually tried tested it out earlier today, I was like, wow, this is on a scale of 10 to 10. I feel like this made me really excited. So I would, I would rate it a 10, but um, Danny's gonna switch to the overhead camera and I'm gonna share with you um, these Giordini paints. So I purchased these from Buckle Guy in the United States. I'm actually going to zoom in so that in a second when I do the demonstration you can see um, close up. So I purchased this color set of uh, sampler pack. They also sell the individual colors in jars um, but I, I decided to pick up this sampler set just so I could I wasn't sure which color I'd be using so I figured well I'll just get this set. So these are the colors that are included and you can mix them. So for example, if you need a navy blue, you could take this uh, blue right here with a little bit of uh, black, mix them together and get the color you need. Obviously you'll be mixing in a separate container um, or a paint palette just so that you don't get uh, the original color contaminated. 
You'll also need what I purchased, also these from Buckle Guy, um, a base coat. I got a little jar of base coat and I got a top coat. So I got the matte top coat. I think they had uh, glossy, they had other options for that, but I just usually, I generally prefer a matte look even with uh, when I'm printing pictures, I, I like matte. And you'll need um, a paint roller. So this is the paint roller tool. I think, I don't remember if I got this from Buckle Guy or not, but I used this um, when I did my edge coat demonstration a couple years back. So this Giardini paint, the application is similar to the edge coat. So if you're not familiar with edge coat, you can find that video on my YouTube channel. But what it does is it, let me move this out of the way. So I prepared a little sample. This is one of the six quick cork projects, the bifold wallet. So before the show, I applied the Giordini paint just to this little area over here. So I'm not sure, hopefully you can see it on camera. So this edge right here, I applied the, the paint to, and this is the just the raw edge over here. So I think I probably could have done a little bit better of trimming the fabric so that they were even, but this is what it looks like. And the color that I used for this, this is the natural uh, with gold cork. I used um, this one straight up. I didn't change the color at all. Obviously you could, but I just uh, wanted to, you know, prepare my little sample before the show. So this is what I did. So I wanted to share with you um, the process for applying this. So you'll be using this paint roller for all three steps. So step number one is the base coat, which I did before the show. I applied some base coat to this edge. Um, between each step, you allow the layers to dry for 30 minutes. So base coat, apply, let it dry for 30 minutes. Um, if you have a rough edge, you can use some a bit of sandpaper to sand it if you'd like. Um, step number two is the actual color. So after you apply the color, you let it dry for 30 minutes and then um, the top coat, apply the top coat, let it dry for 30 minutes and then you're done. So. Um, I applied the base coat before the show just because I don't have, you know, all that time to let the different layers dry on the show, but I thought I would apply um, the edge paint. Oh, that little top came off. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put that to the side. I thought I'd apply this. Again, the process is the same as far as applying each of the layers. So I'm just gonna dip this in my container, and like I said, if you're using a paint palette, you would obviously just uh, dip, dip it in there instead. Okay, as you can see, it's got paint on all of the edges, and I'm just going to apply it. You just roll it until you see even layers on all surfaces. And like I said, obviously, I, I should have chosen a better uh, sample as far as um, having my layers cut even but as you can see super easy to do I just rinse this off um, in between each of the different layers and then this this layer is going to dry for 30 minutes and again let me see where I had the the finished edge so this is the finished edge again that's what it looks like so I'm super impressed with this um, you'll want to apply this to the edges before you sew it to fabric. So for instance, if you're applying this to your strap fabric, you'll apply it to the strap after you top stitch it, but before you stitch the bag, or sorry, before you stitch the strap to the actual bag because you don't wanna be painting and accidentally getting some of this um, edge paint on your fabric. Um, yeah, this is a really, I, I'm going to be use, using this in future. It's good for cork, vinyl, leather. While you can leave the edges raw, I just feel like this is super professional and what you'd see from a bag that you would purchase in the store. So again, um, super impressive. And again, it's uh, called Giordini Paint. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention about this, and I've also linked to it in the description, but the, the actual paint has a shelf life of about 12 months after you purchase it. So just keep that in mind um, as far as what size bottle you're purchasing, if you're buying a sample pack, um, maybe start off with just a small bottle of a color you think you'll use often, such as black. See how you like it and then maybe invest in other colors just because of the, the shorter shelf life. So um, I really love this prod product so much. I was, um, I thought it was interesting. By the way, Margaret uh, recommended this Giordini paint in the Facebook group and I had never heard of it. So I started to do some investigating and um, I thought it seemed interesting, but it sort of blew me away. So um, again, the links are in the description Description if you'd like to read more about the Giordini paints or see what kind of colors are available. 
All right, um, I'm going to be answering some questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type it in the comments right now, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch our show, and you'll need to be logged into your account before you're, you're able to type a question. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winners of the giveaways, both from last week and the week before. So the winner of the Mendocino fabric bundle was, was Irish Heritage. And then the winner of uh, the cork uh, sampler pack, if you will, was Susan Benora. So congratulations to you, both of you. I've contacted you on social media and just waiting to hear back from you so that we can get you set up with your prizes. All right, Danny, take it away with the questions. Cindy says, will you be getting the black cork with metallic rainbow back in stock soon? Yes, I apologize that we ran out of stock on that one. Uh, we do have some more on the way. Um, we have an out of stock notification available on the website for any products that are listed as out of stock. In the case of the cork, since we have two different size options, you'll just need to select the size that you're interested in from the drop down box and then um, a blank box will pop up where you can type in your email address to be added to our out of stock notification list. And what that does is as soon as I list that item, that particular item back in stock, you're automatically emailed um, so that you can purchase that out of stock item as soon as we have it available. Erica says, your t-shirt is so cool, where can I find one? So I purchased recently three sewing themed t-shirts from Daddy Dressed Me by Michael Gardner. The link is in the description and I just really love these and I love, um, I have a lot of t-shirts, both sewing related and horse related and I even have some Bearded Dragon t-shirts and I just like proclaiming my interests when I go out. Uh, I mean, it's been a while since we've gone out in public, but um, it's just fun to share what I'm interested in. So um, on a t-shirt, something visible. Um, Cheryl says, are they acrylics? Um, let me see. It does not say on the little jars, but if you check my link in the description, I'm sure the, the links to purchase the paints, I'm sure there's more information um, it's just not on the containers that I have here. Um, let's see, Jay says, compared to edge coat, is this a better way to finish the cork edges? So I do really like the edge coat, but um, I love the Giardini paints even more. Um, probably twice as much as I liked the edge coat, if that's possible. Um, but might be personal preference, maybe get a, a small jar of one color like I mentioned and, and see how you like it. Judy says, uh, Sarah, your idea of using comic boards to fold fabric is inspired. Thank you so much. Spent two days arranging my fabrics. So if you've not yet been in on the comic book craze, I do have a video on my YouTube channel, how to fold fabric onto comic book boards. Um, it's so funny. You, you buy a pack of comic book boards. They generally come in packs of 100 and you think, you know, two packs sounds fine. I think that'll, you know, fit my stash. Um, and then the boards come and you fold some fabric and you've hardly made a dent. So you need to buy lots more comic book boards. I use these, let me have Danny switch over to the overhead camera really quick. So the comic book boards, actually I have some, shoot, on the other side of the table, here we go. All right, so these are the, the comic book boards. Um, I was cutting some fabric earlier and so I had to take a piece of fabric off the board. So they are archival quality boards, so they're fairly sturdy. And I buy these plastic alligator clips. Um, these are really handy because once I fold the fabric on the board, I just secure it with the clips so that the fabric is not um, coming off the board willy-nilly. But it, again, check out my video on YouTube for um, that demonstration on how to fold the fabric onto the boards. All right, Danny can switch back and there we go. Um, Linda says, is there any smell? That's a great question. And I did want to mention um, the first two coats, so the the base coat and the actual paint, I did not notice a smell. I, I did go down in the basement to apply um, when I was testing things out earlier just because I wasn't sure about the smell and I really do not like odors from different various products. When I opened uh, the top coat, which was the last layer, um, when I opened the jar, I didn't notice a smell. Um, but as soon as I sealed it back up, it was fine. I didn't notice a smell from the actual um, product that I applied it to. But like I said, I just applied it in the basement or apply it in some sort of out of the way work area or maybe your garage if, if you're unsure of it. But um, yeah, I was, I was super happy with this product. Um, Elizabeth said, what thread do you use on your bag? So, 
Um, I use or I prefer Aura Fill 40 weight thread. It's 100% cotton thread. Polyester thread, all-purpose polyester thread is completely fine as well. That's just um, all these years of the fabric, um, sorry, the, the thread that I've been using for bag making. Uh, Linda says, Sarah, I noticed that some of my leather purchase bags seem to have more of a rounded leather edge on the straps. Any idea how I can accomplish this type of look? Um, I'm not sure if you meant, mean the finishing or a certain style of purse tab, but if you're looking for the finishing, I think you'll be really happy with this uh, Giardini paint. Um, it does look, um, assuming that you're cutting your fabrics, your edges even, um, it does have a nice rounded look and a nice smooth color and um, yeah, super happy with it. Jackie says, I just use Sharpie markers on the edges and looks good. Yeah, Sharpie's a really great idea too. Um, Sharpie's a good idea, especially since there's so many different colors available. Um, Ritha says, I bought some off-brand cork and it is very thin. Is quality cork thin too? I have never seen quality cork to be able to compare the two. So the cork that we sell is 0.8 millimeters in thickness, if that helps you as far as the thickness goes. Um, I've actually, to be completely honest, I've never used any other types of cork besides what we sell, so I don't have uh, a comparison besides what I've heard um, word of mouth. Um, yeah, so I guess that's not help uh, much of a help, but um, if, you've, if you're watching and you've purchased our cork before, um, let us know in the comments what you thought of it as far as the thickness uh, and the quality. Kathy says, do you have an emerald and copper cork available? Is there even that color available? So we do have a dark green, it is called emerald. Copper, hmm. The closest color to that might be our cinnamon cork, and we also have sort of a marbled cinnamon. It's called gingerbread, so maybe check those three colors out and see if they uh, will serve your purposes for your project. Um, Pat says, um, are the t-shirt ladies cut or men? They were, oh, Danny, what's the word for shirts that are? Unisex. Unisex, thank you very much. <laughs> they were, uh, from what I re remember, they were unisex, but double check the links in the description uh, for the t-shirt link. Um, and there were hoodies and sweatshirts and hats too. Carla says, I believe you mentioned Violet is working on drawing up some logo items. How is she making out with this? Oh, thank you, Danny. She did, we did a couple, we got a couple items from uh, Sticker Mule, is that the company, Danny? Yeah. Sticker Mule, just to test it out, and this is this was her first uh, attempt. We just got a few uh, magnets and stickers just to see. She's, she's working on some other designs. We got a prism sticker, um, holographic. holographic sticker. Uh, I, I sort of, Danny and I agreed that we liked either a, a white background or a clear background better. Um, we're doing this to get samples to see what we like. And yeah, we Danny says we're just getting samples. So this is uh, a magnet that we got. She also did a really cool, um, I don't have it to show you, but she did a, an illustration of the Sublime bag with one of my, it's been many years since I designed fabric, but she put one of my fabric designs on the front of the Sublime bag. So it looks really cool. And when she finishes it and we get some stickers printed, I'll share those with you on the show as well. Um, what is your largest bag most like a duffel bag? So we have a few duffel bag options. Um, the emblem duffel bag is one. Um, I have another one behind me that I can share with you. The emblem duffel bag's in the basement, but this is the coalition bag. It comes in two different sizes, and one size is a duffel bag, which is what this is. So uh, I think you can, yeah, you can see it pretty well. Um, it's got side pockets, um, purse tabs on the front. Um, some accents on the bottom, so it's a fairly it's a fairly large bag. One of my favorites too. I really love the Coalition bag. So I'm gonna try to so we can see her uh, drawings. I'll put it on there. Is that cool? Sure. Danny says he's gonna try to get Violet's drawings up there. Oh yeah, there we go. There's uh, the artwork. Uh, I don't have the other one that we have on the sticker. Yeah, he doesn't have the other one, but um, Violet drew this on her iPad. Danny, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. She's much more um, adept at uh, the technology and illustrations than I am. Uh, Quilting in Romania says, uh, do they come off? Um, is she asking about the stickers, Danny? I believe it's the paint edge coat. The, I don't think this um, Giardini paint is washable. Um, yeah, I don't see anything on the packaging. There's not a lot of, on the packaging, whether it's acrylic or washable or anything like that. But again, check the link in the description and hopefully there's more 
um, specific and detailed information that you're looking for there. Um, Kathleen says, have you tried doing a contrasting color with the paint? I have not. Um, actually, that probably would have been a good idea for the demonstration. Um, uh, I was gonna say I'll try it right now, but I still have that brown paint on the, the thing. No, I have not tried a contrast in color, but that might look really interesting. Perhaps two colors that look good together, maybe like uh, turquoise fabric with uh, orange paint, something like that. Mary says, you have to put something on the edges of the cork. Um, actually, you don't. You can leave it raw if you prefer, like I've done with this wallet. I made this wallet a few years ago, so I just left the edges raw. I just pulled it out for this demonstration because I knew I had a, a finished project already and it would be nice to, to coat the edges. So um, just optional, you can leave the, red, the edges raw if you prefer, but some people like to have um, more of a finish on the, on the edges. So you need one second. Okay. Danny's... Uh, busy collecting questions he says one second um, let's see what else can I say about these uh, there were I did notice on the buckle guy website they had a few different applicators for the paint um, I think there was a, l a little machine type situation but I felt like for my purposes uh, I thought I'd just be using this occasionally so um, the paint roller suited my purposes I did buy some foam brushes because I thought I wasn't sure how I'd be applying the paint but once I got it I could see that the paint roller would would work uh, the best for for applying it to the edges there I got those oh there it is uh, so the violet this is the illustration violet did of the sublime bag um, as you could see, the, the print design on there, that's from my first line of fabric with Art Gallery Fabrics, again, out of print for many years already, but it, the, the fabric line was called Jungle Avenue. I really love my favorite part about this illustration that Violet did with, were the zippers on either side. So, and I was really surprised. I didn't know she was making this illustration. I was really surprised that she was able to, to pull my fabric into the design. So, um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> Violet, I hope you don't mind that we shared your, your illustrations with everyone. Cheryl says, could you spread that coating with a thin brush or another tool? Um, I did not try it with the brush, um, but the roller, I feel like it was an even application of the paint and the, the base coat and the top coat. Um, it, and it seems kind of foolproof. So using the that roller, taking a look at the, the front and back of the cork, where I applied it to that edge. It did not get any paint on the front and the back, only on the edge, and that's it. So I wonder if using a brush, you might be getting some paint on the front and the back, which is kind of what you don't want. Shelly says, um, can you tell me what you would recommend for a first time bag maker would like to start simple? So my two favorite recommendations for um, beginning bag makers are the Baker Street bag, which is a free pattern and video. Um, also the easy leather hobo bag that's also a free pattern and video and you can find those uh, on my YouTube channel and on my website. Um, Felicia says could you share where you bought your machine that you use? So my machine I bought in 2013 I think I originally got it from Sovac Direct. Um, obviously there's other places that you can buy that machine. Um, it's a Juki TL2010Q and I do have a video on my YouTube channel of my sewing machine in case you're interested. I, I demonstrate all the features. I put a lot of layers of cork and foam interfacing on the machine and then sew through all that. If you do a search on YouTube on my, on my channel, you just wanna search for my sewing machine. Um, Tina says, do your fabrics get wrinkled on the comic book boards? Um, actually, no, they don't. Here's, here's one that, Granted, this is a few yards of fabric, but here's uh, one of my pieces that I had on the comic book boards and looks great. Um, I do like it better with less yardage, like a yard piece or, or even two yards. I think this piece might have been three or so yards, but um, I like the comic book boards and I like that when I stack them on my shelves, uh, all the fabric is like in a really straight line. And then if I take a fabric off to look at it and then put it back on, before I started using the comic book boards, everything would be a mess when I would take fabric off and then have to put it back on because the comic book boards kind of lend a certain stiffness uh, to this little bundle. And without the comic book boards, it would kind of be floppy and I try to get it back on the shelf like in between you know, two different stacks because I had fabrics in sometimes in color order or in order by different designers. And having the boards in there is really helpful for organization when you're, um, you, uh, 
auditioning is the word I was looking for, auditioning different fabrics for uh, a bag or other project. Terry says, can you recommend metal snaps for bags, not rivets, and not plastic snaps? Thank you. So the Snap Setter tool, uh, which we saw on our website, has uh, metal snaps in different finishes, and um, all you need for that is a hammer and a flat hard surface, and it's really easy to use. Um, I also have a video on my YouTube channel about the Snap Setter tool, so you can find that either on YouTube or on my website. Um, Blossom says, I know you said the Easy Leather Hobo Bag is, is too large to be made into an SVG file for the Cricut, but how about just the strap? Um, I can't for the life of me cut it out straight and neat. Uh, let me write, uh, let me find a pen. Where did all my pens go? I'll write myself a note and I'll, I'll check on that and to see if that could be done, Hobo Bag Strap. Um, real leather, you use a smoothing wheel to smooth the edges, then you can paint it. Um, Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, I don't work a, a lot with leather. I think I've only made uh, maybe two or three bags with leather, and at that it was only the straps and accents. So thank you so much for piping up with that information. Um, Jolene says, um, how do you join the squad? That's just a term we use for our live shows and in our Facebook group. Um, I see you are on Facebook, so if you're not already a member of our group, um, within that link in the description, there is a link to our Facebook group, and we also have separate groups for um, all the states in the United States and many countries. Uh, before the pandemic, a lot of the state and country groups got together to sew in person. Um, I know during the pandemic, some of them were having virtual events or virtual sew alongs. And so um, definitely join us in the state and country groups. And when things uh, sort of return to normal, hopefully we'll see more of the in-person sewing and sewing events. Terry says, uh, do you think that paint could be used on Moda solids for artwork or not that type of paint? Um, to be honest, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I just was aware of it as far as finishing the edges of uh, fabrics like cork or vinyl. Um, I don't know, but the company's uh, link is in the description under the 12-month uh, shelf life. I put a note on that and put a link to their website. So. If you'd like to contact them and ask them, you can. However, if anyone watching has used uh, paint to paint on regular fabric like quilting cotton, let us know in the comments and what kind you used, and Danny will look out for that, and hopefully we can get it up on the screen. Shirley says, can a person use those paints for painting and cork, say the front of the wallet I designed? Um, might be okay. You might want to, um, test out. out on a little scrap of the cork and see how that looks um, as far as painting wise. How it wears. And how it wears, yeah, Danny's mentioning the wear too. Um, Janice says, what needles do you use in your Juki? I use uh, 9014 Microtex needles. I either like the Organ brand or the Schmetz brand. And uh, again, I do have a video on my YouTube channel, um, different needle sizes for bag making. So you can just do a search in the So Sweetness channel, um, needles for bag making. <laughs> Uh, could the Polaris bag be made with a turned lining instead of a drop-in lining? It could. The assembly would need to be done a little bit differently. So if you have another of my patterns where the bag is sewn right sides together, for example, the mm, maybe the Aragon bag or uh, even the Cumberland backpack, um, you can use similar assembly for the Polaris bag if you'd like to sew it uh, that way, right sides together, rather than the drop-in lining. Um, Oh, I didn't, I missed that question. Uh, Gwyneth says, do you sell replacements for the snap setter or where can I find them? Yes, we do have replacement snaps, snaps on our website in some neutral finishes. And you can find that uh, at sosweetness.com under the shop tab. And we have a separate section for notions, or you could just type in snap setter in the search box and it'll give you a list of all the snap setter products that we sell. Danny, are you calling on the questions? Yeah. All right, wow, that the show flew by really fast tonight. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was just fun talking about all those projects. I was really products. I was really looking forward to it. So, one more thing that we have left for the show, and that is the giveaway. So, I'm going to do a forty dollar gift certificate to So Sweetness. Uh, you have uh, almost a week to enter. I'll be drawing the winner at the end of the day this Saturday and announcing the winner on next Sunday's show. Just type your answer in the comments to be entered. My question is. Have you sewed with any of these before, cork, leather, or vinyl? Um, let me know in the comments which one. If you have not, let me know which you would like to, to sew with or work with in the future. So thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye, everybody.